The problem we will be solving can be found in Sears and Szymanski's College Physics by Hughes D. Young, 9th edition, page 153, problem 12. In a rescue, the 73 kilogram police officer suspended by two cables as shown in figure 5.44. A. Sketch a free body diagram of him. B. Find the tension in each cable. Now let's proceed with part A of problem 12. Part A says sketch a free body diagram of him or the police officer. Okay, so I kind of drew already the free body diagram. We are representing the police officer as this dot right here or this particle. The force is acting on the police officer is, of course, these two tensions and, of course, the weight or the gravitational force or of the officer directed downward or towards the center of the earth. This tension and this tension are different because the angles are different. We can label them whatever we want. I will label this one, of course, tension T1 and this one tension T2. And this will be the weight Mg. Okay? So, this will be your answer to part A of this problem. A free body diagram is really just a representation of all the force vectors acting on a body or a particle. We have achieved that already, so let's move on with some part B. So, part B, this is more or less a representation of what we have here, the problem here. Data and alpha. I label them data and alpha. You can label them A, B, C, D, whatever you want. But remember, we must distinguish between these two. These are different. This angle is given to us is 35 degrees, and this angle here, alpha, is 48 degrees. So, what I'm going to draw here, or label, I'm going to label first. This is tension T1. We call this one tension T1. This one tension T2. Okay? I'm going to draw here a dotted line. And let us not forget we have a vector. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna draw a vector of this is the component of weight of the police officer. Of course, this is our police officer, this particle right here, or this dot. Okay. Because I do the dot this dotted line right here, you can see I constructed two right triangles with hypotenuse T1 on the left side and T2 on the right side. Okay? Now, our goal is to decompose this vector T1 and this vector T2 into their horizontal and vertical components. Before we proceed, we want to choose a frame of reference, okay? And now, everything that's directed towards the right, all the forces directed towards the right, I will call positive. Positive. All or any forces directed towards the left be directed towards the negative sense. All the forces directed upward will be positive and anything directed downward will be negative okay we can see this here of course this will fit the screen perfect negative now we will begin with T1 T1 will have a component in the X direction and also a component in the Y direction okay now to get these components remember this is a triangle and this hypotenuse if we multiply the magnitude T1 by the cosine of this angle data, will give us the projection adjacent to the angle. Remember, the adjacent projection is given by the cosine. So T1 multiplied by the cosine of data will give us the X component. T1 cosine of data. Namely, if we multiply T1 by the sine of data, remember, if we multiply any magnitude or any hypotenuse of any triangle by the sine of data will give us the projection um, opposite of the angle. Okay, so we have that. Let's proceed with T2 in the x direction and T2 in the y direction. Well, T2, okay, we have T2, this is the magnitude multiplied by the Cosine of alpha will give us the projection adjacent to the angle or the x component. So T2 cosine of alpha will give us that component. And T2 sine of alpha will give us that component. Okay? Now, of course, we have another component here. I mean, another force uh, directed downward, mg. We have mg. So remember... The sum of these two forces 
the sum of these two forces, these are just components, x and y components, the sum of these two components will give us this vector t1. The sum of these two components will give us this vector t2. And mg is just the gravitational force of the police officer or the weight. Now, we will proceed with implementing Newton's law in both x and y direction. I'm going to draw here in a separate sheet of paper. The data that we have gathered is t1, the x direction, equals t1 cosine data, t1 in the y direction, is t1 sine data, t2 in the x direction, is t2 cosine of alpha, t2 in the y direction is t2 sine alpha. And of course, we have mg. Okay? The reason I put an equal sign is because we know mg is directed downward or towards the negative sense. We said that any force directed downward is negative. Anything directed towards the right is positive and towards the left is negative. We know T1 cosine data, T1 cosine of data, this is directed towards the left. There's one component going up and towards the left. So the component that's going up is going to be the Y component. And that's positive, and the x component here is directed towards the left. So, of course, this will be negative, and this will be positive. These forces here are directed upward and towards the right, so both of these components are directed towards the positive sense. Okay, now that we have the magnitudes and the direction of these forces, we can perform vector addition. And we will implement Newton's first law. The reason why is Newton's first law is because this um, system or this particle or this police officer is in a state of rest or in a state of equilibrium. When something is at rest, or in this case equilibrium, the sum of the forces in both x and y direction is equal to zero. This is equilibrium when the sum of the forces is equal to zero. Equilibrium is also when the particle is moving at constant speed but in this case we know this police officer is not moving at constant speed anywhere he's at rest therefore the sum of the forces in all direction is zero because the police officer is not accelerating up down left or right okay so we will proceed here where the sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to or in the x direction we have t1x and t2x t1x is negative we know t negative t1 cosine of data now we add this component here, T2 cosine of alpha equals what? Equals zero. The sum of these equals zero. Now, the sum of the forces in the y direction, well, the y direction we have T1 sine data directed positive, T1 sine data. The y direction we also have plus T2 sine alpha. The, re the reason is plus T2 sine alpha is because this force is directed upward. And of course, mg is directed towards the negative sense. Negative mg equals zero. Okay? Now, what we're going to do here, we're going to solve this system of equations. Because we know if we have a system of equations with two unknowns, we can solve by substitution or by any other method that will help us solve. In this case, I will use substitution. I will solve the first equation for T1. We know that T1 is equal to T2 cosine of alpha divided by the cosine of data. How did I get this? Well, in the first equation, I added both sides, T1 cosine data, and I divide both sides by cosine data. So I'm left with this. Now that we have solved here for T1, I'm gonna so I'm gonna substitute this t1 here to the second equation. So now let's proceed here. We have t2, t2 cosine of alpha divided by cosine of data. I'm gonna put this in parentheses. I'm gonna label this t1 because that's what t1 is equal to. I'm gonna substitute it in here. We're gonna multiply t1, of course, by sine of data. We're gonna add t2 sine of alpha. I'm going to subtract the weight. I'm going to set that equal to zero. This is the equation we have now. So let's transfer this equation to the next page. We have that T2 
You have that T2. Cosine of alpha. Divided by cosine of data. Multiply by the sine of data. Plus T2 sine alpha. Minus mg equals zero. This is the equation we have. I right, notice that we have sine of data and cosine of theta. The quotient of sine and cosine of the same angle is a tangent. Is the trigonometric identity. So we can um, simplify this expression here to T2 multiplied by the cosine of alpha. And this quotient, sine theta over cosine theta, will give us a tangent of data. Now we're going to add here T2 sine alpha and subtract mg when it's set equal to zero. Now, what we can do here algebraically is to add mg on both sides. And I'm going to go through those steps. I usually don't go through the algebra, but for this one I will. I'm going to add on both sides mg on both sides of the equation. Of course, here mg cancels. On the left side, what I'm left with? I'm left with this. I'm left with T2. Cosine of alpha multiplied by the tangent of data plus T2 sine of alpha is equal to mg. Okay? Now, we know that on the left side we have a common factor of T2. So I'm going to factor T2. T2, I'm going to factor it. So we have now cosine of alpha multiplied by the tangent of data plus sine of alpha is equal to mg. All I did was factor out the common factor T2 on, on the left side. Okay, let's see, we have some more room for uh, solving for T2. Now, to solve for T2, I have a product of T2 and this parenthesis, so I will have to divide both sides of the equation by this parenthesis. So that means that T2 will equal, when we solve for T2, mg, the quotient mg, over... The cosine of alpha multiplied by the tangent of data plus the sine of alpha. Okay? This is the tension 2. This is tension 2. Okay? Now, solving this, when we um, substitute these values, we're given that the mass 73 kilograms. We multiply the mass 73 kilograms by 9.8, which is the acceleration due to gravity. I will get that this is, of course, 715.4 newtons. And I will divide this by a unitless quantity, which will be cosine of alpha. We know that alpha is 48 degrees. Multiply this by the tangent of data. We know that data is 35 plus the sine of alpha, which is 48. This quantity here, we're going to multiply by 715.4. The inverse of that quantity multiplied by 715.4, and we get that the tension T2 is equal to 590.4 newtons. Okay, this is the tension T2, 590.4 newtons. Okay, so now we're gonna go here back to T1. Now that we know T2, well, T2. T2, we're going to multiply this by the cosine of alpha, which is 48. And we're going to divide this by the cosine of data, which is 35. Cosine of data is 35. The quotient of these two will give us 482.3 newtons. And we have solved here part B.